Hey, what's going on, everyone? We are back with episode two of Song of Horror. So where I left off last time, if you guys remember, I made a tip video for the first episode of Song of Horror, which was how to survive the Husher Mansion. And the reason why was because my save file got corrupted, so I had to start all over from the beginning. And rather than just start the Let's Play from the beginning, I decided to create a new character named Alexander Laskin, and he was going to be my main focus for the video. So Alexander Laskin, for those who don't know, he is the caretaker of the Husher Mansion. He's going to be in episode two, and some strange things have happened. We've rescued Daniel from the basement, and now we're trying to figure out what the next steps are in order to find Sebastian Husher in this mysterious music box. So let's start off with episode two. All right, eerily quiet. Daniel has been rescued from the Husher Mansion, but his problems have only just begun. The melody of the music box is stuck in his head, and horrifying nightmares and visions along with it. Isaac Farber, antique store owner and friend of Sebastian P. Husher, is the first person to have heard of it. Finding him could be the key to discovering what's happening to Daniel. All right, we got four characters, Alexander Laskin, Rene Artigas, don't know who he is, Erica Farber, and Daniel Neuer. Oh, so we get to play as Daniel again. All right, so let's dive in. Well, well, it appears as though the Prince of Slumber will be granting us an audience. How are you feeling, Your Highness? Ugh, my head. I had a dream. I... I'm okay. Thanks for coming, Lydia. Good afternoon, Mr. Neuer. I am Alexander Laskin. I work for the Husha family. He's the one who found you. Oh, I, uh... Thank you very much, Mr. Laskin. Without you, I don't know. The pleasure is mine. You see, I would like to help you find Mr. Sebastian. I... I need to know what happened to him and to my wife. Of course. I I'm feeling much better. In fact, I was considering leaving here as soon as possible and... Daniel, the doctor said you need complete rest. Complete. I'm fine, really. I found this. Apparently, Husher received a music box from an acquaintance of his, a certain Mr. Farber. It seems as though he was researching the music box when he vanished. And from what Farber says, the music box may be related to everything that has happened. I'm not sure we should stick our nose into this business after everything that's occurred. She may be right, Daniel. I'm sure the police are very close to finding out where Husher is. Do you think the police would have found me? We need to find Husher. I saw the box that Faber describes in this letter, but it wasn't really there. It was as if it were on the other side of... Oh. I think we should pay a visit to this Faber and ask him about the music box and Husher. He has a shop in the city not far from here. Daniel, please. I'm fine, really. I think going to a shop and asking the owner a few questions falls within the range of what we can do, don't you? All right, we're in, Farber and Sons. Isaac Farber is the owner of a well-established antique store that he runs with his daughter Erica. He's been friends with Husher for years. All right, and here we are. So we got four characters, like I was saying earlier. We got Alexander Laskin, for those who are just meeting him for the first time, on the menu screen. I also love how he's got like this backdrop of like a train going by. That's pretty cool. So we found several recordings of Masha. I think she might have been corrupted by the uh, the presence. That's the uh, name of the villain in this story. He's got pretty good strength. He's able to close doors with ease. Although he gets scared really easily though. He's got a flask to help calm him down. We've got Erica Farber, the daughter of Isaac Farber. Erica manages the Farber and Sons antique shop along with her father, Isaac. If he's the art expert, she's the managing brains. She's always on top of every slightest detail of the business. Her adventurous spirit takes all 
takes her all over the world in the search of new items to adorn the shop's windows. Incredibly active, Erica has many hobbies and lets her imagination run wild at every chance she gets. She's got a radio cassette player to calm her down. Very common general with her serenity. But she's not very strong, and her stealth could be better. What else we got? We got Rene Artigas. Pardon me if I pronounced that wrong. He's chilling at a 1990s bar. Very small. Kind of reminds me of the 70s, to be honest, with the jukebox. He has a flashlight. He's a security guard, but looks a bit. Rene was born to be a cop, but, and he'll die one too. Born in the Caribbean, he grew disillusioned with the police department in his hometown and set sail for Europe, where he thought his integrity and sense of duty would serve him better. But the grass wasn't as green as it seemed. Tired of moving around, Rene decided to settle down and do what he could to help his fellow citizens. Really strong, great speed, and pretty decent serenity, though he's not very stealthy. Alright. And then we got Daniel Neuer. Pretty good stats all around. Very even. Daniel is a publicist and ex-entrepreneur whose failed business venture led him to become an alcoholic. Drinking cost him his health, his marriage to Sophie, and even his home. Daniel, who has been sober for some time now, has finally managed to secure a stable job and slowly rebuild his life. Alright. So we got three main characters here. I don't really want to risk them just yet. This game is fairly difficult, even though we survived the first level without any casualties. Also, Rene has a gun, so I'm gonna take Rene and uh, do some scouting with him. We'll get through as much of the first level as possible. We also collected all of Husher's haikus. Oh, so we got, oh, we have two item slots. We got a personal item and a bonus personal item. Alright. I hope that gave me Husher Saikus. I don't know if it did. I selected it, but I may not have equipped it. We'll see. So with this episode, I'm not going to cut as much. And I'm just going to let the game play out the way it is. And experience the story and let you guys experience the story as well. All right, here we go. So I'm a security guard. Now with this game, I've learned you have to explore every nook and cranny for details. So if I see something I can interact with it, I'm gonna click it. The list of items can be found in the shop. It's quite well stocked. We got vintage furniture. This is the place to be if you want the occult items. <clears throat> we got some stairs. I'm not leaving here without completing an in-depth investigation of that call. Someone might be in harm's way or in imminent danger. Alright, so Rene Artigas has gotten some sort of call, or distress call from his office. I hope whatever is under the flower pot is not the key to the shop. It would be majorly unadvisable to leave it here. Oh. It is the key! Oh, we got a key already. Alright, what's it say here? I think it's the antique shop key? It says antique shop, but it's upside down. If I were to flip it. I'm sure it would read antique shop. Alright. Anything else here? What was that? The restaurant looks like it's closed, though the lights are on out inside. Maybe they're the ones who reported the bizarre noises coming from the shop. Okay, so there was a noise complaint coming from this neighboring Chinese noodle store about Farber and Sons. Oop, so R1 is the... I'm trying to remember how I run. It's been a while since I've done this. Oh, and I did collect the IQs. Okay, good. Let's examine these real quick. The crawling ones listen behind the mirror, don't let them out. Oh, so the haikus have changed since the first level. All right, change haiku. Searching for the glow warrior, cage, rain, and one down below. It looks like we have a man urinating into a well. That, that's a, that's well, I guess. All right, so we got two poems. I wonder if these are hints for the game. Interesting. I'm trying to run right now. Alright, so LT is to run. Okay. So I got the controls down. Let's get inside and investigate the shop. Nope. I got a key. Let's use it. Alright. Good. I'm at the investigation. 
We're going in, boys and girls. We are going in. Okay, this is the lobby. I don't see anything here I can pick up. Got some umbrellas. An umbrella stand filled with dry umbrellas, so they haven't been used today. Could someone still be inside the shop? Maybe. Let's listen. Sounds fairly empty. Alright, chapter two, early quiet. Everything seems to be in order and quiet, but I better check things out in here. Alright, I didn't want to talk too much during the cinematic. This is a creepy shop. This is the perfect horror setting, I gotta admit. It's a dark, rainy night. I'm a cop on patrol trying to figure out what's going on. Noise complaint. Very ominous lighting. Oh, I think we're gonna be in store for some good scares tonight, guys. Alright, so let's check this place out, piece by piece. I have no idea what our main objective is. Items on display for sale, nothing out of the ordinary, okay. Trying to get to this boat here. Nice ship, I wish I'd crossed the Atlantic in one of those instead of steerage class in a giant tin can. Oh, back when I uh, came to the US. Okay, what's this in the corner? A telescope, unfortunately, I know more perverts that use them to spy at their neighbors than astronomy fans that use them to gaze at the stars. Is this Goltar Speaks? I think this is a reference to Big, the movie. Hmm. Game for fairs and amusement parks. I don't like the doll or the light. None of it. I don't have anything I can... Can I shoot it? No, I can't shoot it. <laughs> oh, we got some notes here. Notes in the last level were critical to finding the locations of the dolls and other items. So let's see what's going on here. List of products acquired with a handwritten note. I can't find it. I can't remember where I stored that blasted music box. Oh, all right, so we are looking for the music box by... I'm guessing that's what we're doing. I thought I left it with the rest of the lot, didn't I? Yes, otherwise, where could it be? In this lot, there was also a wardrobe full of dry blood stains. We took it out into the courtyard and dragged it to one of our storage rooms in the basement, but which one did we place it in? I can't even remember what color or shape it was. What's wrong with me? Could I possibly reveal the blood left behind somehow? I would have to buy luminol, right? That's what the police use. Perhaps that way I could find the lot of products containing the wardrobe and the box with it. Sebastian says I must return it to its original owners, the LeGrant Amsberg family. If I manage that, Will this madness come to an end? Oh, so before the Husher family, we had the Grant Amsberg. They're the ones who were the original owners of the music box. And somehow, we wrapped it with this wardrobe full of dry bloodstains. So we gotta find a wardrobe. Not creepy at all. Okay, what's this? We got a phone. Cash register is ancient. Oh, it's registered, my bad. I hope they take out the money every evening because opening it would be no challenge whatsoever to a thief. Can I open it? No, I cannot, okay. We got a switch here. Uh, what's this do? A switch for electrical devices. I need a special key to turn it on, okay. Might be a puzzle piece. Can I use the thick key right here? No way. Nope, all right, so this is a different key. Let's check this thing right here. We got a red skull, or head. Not all the objects on these shelves are antiques. Some are customer information cards and order forms. That is a creepy looking head. I'm going to zoom in uh, with Premiere Pro to show you guys what I'm looking at. Super creepy right now. Let's head upstairs. And yeah, we're just going to go room by room. And this place is huge. I don't know if this is a one room shop or if there are multiple rooms or if we got to go someplace else, but for now, We'll stick by here. Judging by the display, this document should be important, although if it were really valuable, they'd keep it under lock and key. Nope, nothing to collect there. Got a chessboard. Miscellaneous items on display, including two Japanese swords. I hope they watch out to prevent any customers from climbing up to grab one. Nothing too crazy. That's a creepy puppet. Oh, God. All right, we got a bookshelf. 
there are figurines and papers amidst all these old books. All right, nothing too important there. Ooh, pottery. Hmm. Vases of considerable size. Better be careful around such brittle pieces. Okay, can't break them. We got another item here I can interact with. If I can just shine my light directly on it. Or maybe... Oh no, maybe it's over here. Ah, this is it. The table is covered with the shop's sales materials. There is space underneath it though. Oh, this might be a hiding spot. I'm trying to open up my map again. Nope. Ah, yes, so that is a hiding spot. And we got the coal tar machine and the the switch at the front desk we can interact with. Got a samurai. Ooh, look at that samurai armor. Hmm. An old suit of armor made entirely of wood. Pretty impressive. Interesting. It looks like there's something in its mouth. Hmm? Should I try to pry that thing out of its mouth? Should I? Yes, we should. Bronze Coltar token. A bronze colored metal token for Coltar machines. Ooh, so now I can interact with the Coltar machine. Look at the detail on that coin. It's so cool. It looks like are those zodiac signs? Either. I think they're Greek symbols of some sort. I'm not sure what they are, though. Might check that out later on Google. Actually, let me examine it one more time. Open up my inventory real quick. Examine it one more time. Hmm. Now, it's not giving me any more information on what those markings are, but that's cool. I like it. A gramophone like the one in my childhood home. Nothing that would be of use to me now, though. They have that in Layers of Fear, too. Also a good game. Highly recommend you guys play it. Well organized books on important personages. I suppose that there is some method to the madness in the way this myth of objects is strewn about. Alright, so the shop is a little disorganized. Hmm. Ooh, we got a, perhaps a puzzle of some sort. A drawer closed with a high security steel lock. I hope they don't store any money in there. It would not be safe. Key is ineffective. And the coal tar token would be ineffective as well, and I'm guessing so with my gun. And I think this clears out this top area. Yeah. There's a door there. I don't want to open that just yet. Let's head back downstairs and let's uh let's try out this coal tar token on the coal tar machine. I am curious about that. Coltaro speaks. Here we go. Aw, oh, such a great laugh. Message dropped down, let's see what sort of nonsense it says. There is something you forgot. Hmm? Remember it and you will be blessed. Something I forgot. Maybe it's the game telling me I forgot to check something? Not really sure. Okay, cool. Check this out. So far, so good. Very secure. Alright, let's check along these walls. The coat hanger was shaking when I entered the room. Oh! I can keep it! Okay! Hmm. I can mend the wire. Old books and scrolls. This establishment is just brimming with interesting items. Might be able to collect some of these. What's this? There are display items from the store on the table. Nothing under it, however. This might also be a place I can hide. Check that out real quick. It is! We got two hiding spots in this room. Excellent. Gallery door here. Door closed to enter. Ask at the counter. Another door there. Don't feel like opening that just yet. Scrolls, old tomes, and stacks of books. There are libraries with a smaller inventory than this shop. Wait. <gasps> oh. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I hear the music box. Tell me for dressmaking, not much interest to me at this time. At the end of the first level, when you finished all the puzzles and you had to burn the evil doll, like I said in my tip video, you could hear the music. It's very faint right now, but I'm sure we'll hear it 
a little more louder as we progress. A guitar, I don't see the price around here anywhere, but it isn't exactly at the top of my shopping list either, okay. Nothing too crazy there. Ooh, we got a empty case. Looks like the ones my parents left me when I came to live in Europe. Feels like a lifetime ago. And I strolled down memory lane. Cool. What's this? An ancient spyglass. Not too shabby as a decorative piece, but I doubt it magnifies much. Alright, I can't pick it up. That's all the items here. Cannon! Hmm. Hope this cannon isn't not working. Nope. Don't want to collect the cannon. As useful as that would be to blow things up. A jack-in-the-box. Who buys this kind of stuff? Art collectors, dude. That's all I can say. Some of these things are really expensive. I imagine it's because they're antiques. We have a broken mirror. Ooh, what's this? Everything is in quite good shape except that mirror. Now remember, they broke the mirrors in the first level. At least the Husher family was doing that because I think they were transforming into monsters and they didn't want to see the reflections. Old school film camera, that's super dope. I like that. An impressive suit of armor, very neat. We got two more doors here, and I think that's all in this area, except, uh, oh. Samurai sword's up here. A weapon should not be used as decoration, it just sends the wrong message. Depends on who you ask, you know, I don't know if there's been a, uh, a lot of theft and break-ins here, so might be useful to the store owner. Alright, so I'm gonna check my map real quick. We got one, two, three, four different passages we can go through. That's a lot. Hmm. Let's check uh, top right passage first. Yeah, top right up the stairs where I was last time, and then I'll work my way room by room. There's a method to this madness, boys and girls. There's a method. Oh, is this an item? This old first aid kit is one of the few items I would like to purchase from the shop. Wish I could just pick it up. From my experience playing the first level, every single item has a purpose. There is no such thing as a wasted item unless it's a collectible. So I am going to be searching every nook and cranny. Just so you guys know. Alright. Actually, before I continue, I did pick up a coat hanger. Let's see if I can open that lock right over here. I doubt I can. But it's worth a shot. That is not helpful. Okay. Well, A for effort. Alright, well, let's have a listen. Nothing. Okay. Coast is clear. Ooh. We are in some hallway of sorts, by the looks of it. Nice little close-up. I could use that for my thumbnail if I wanted to. Adjust the angle a little bit more. Renee Artigas, private investigator. Alright. Clear? Mm -mm. Can I... No, it's not letting me use the key. Okay. Let's continue downstairs. I think they also mentioned that the wardrobe in question was put in the basement. So this might be a good place for me to check out. So if I get attacked from the presence, I don't see any way out. So this is not a good spot to be, I think. All right. Let's have a listen. Clear? Let's open you up. No. No way. Oh, I think I might have the key. Mm -mm. Ah, different key. Okay. So we gotta go back. So we're gonna head back to the main area and go through a different door. Is this thing I can interact with? No, I cannot. I can only go up the stairs. Alright, so pretty uneventful hallway. It's okay. I don't mind. Head back the way we came. I should not have to listen. Because I already went through this door. It was safe. Alright. Check my map real quick. Yeah, we got two more doors. Three more, actually. 
All right, let's go to the one next to the hiding spot. Head down the steps here. I didn't see another door next to the front entrance. Because that's the front entrance door. Where's the other one? It was that one. Oh, so it wasn't. Oh, there's another door next to uh, the gallery that I didn't see. Oh. What's behind door number two? Let's have a listen. So far, it sounds clear. Looks like a storage room of sorts. What's this? Oh, letter went by Sebastian P. Husher. A letter from Sebastian P. Husher to Isaac Farber dated August 13th, 1998. All right. Dear Isaac, I'm sorry about your trouble getting to sleep. If it is any consolation, I have been suffering the same plight recently myself, perhaps due to the imminent proofreading of my novel. If quality can be measured by the time invested, it should be one of my finest works. However, I suspect that this is not always the case. Despite everything, I found a bit of time to look into your mysterious music box. Based on the carving in the wood, I'm certain that it is European, from the late 19th or early 20th century. I also noticed that it is of a extraordinary quality, perhaps a real luxury item back in its era. I will continue my research. Get well soon, Sebastian P. Husher. Okay. What's this item? A pile of boxes with private business documents, not very well organized, but I admit my own are quite a mess too, so better not to point figures or fingers. And okay, this is also So the importance of this room was just finding the letter. Alright. That's that door. We got two more rooms to explore, guys. Dead ahead. The back to back. I think one of them was a bathroom. Here we are. So we got the bathroom and we got the exit. Okay, let's do the bathroom first. It's clear. Ooh, another broken mirror. No signs of violence in sight, but the mirrors are broken. What's this? A spray bottle. A spray bottle that appears to have once held dangerous substances. Hmm. Since it's empty, it's very light. Okay, we get to keep it. That's a, a toilet. That's a sink. What's this? Towel rack? Towels for customers, covered in dust. Either there aren't many customers, or the store has been closed for days. Okay. Nothing too crazy there. Let's head back outside. Alright, we got another exit door. Quiet. Okay. Oh, it's locked? What about the key? The door's open. Alright, so now I got rid of my key. Let's listen one more time. Silence. Good. See what's to the other side. Ooh. Many doors by the looks of it. Got two right here on my right. It's clear. Nope. nope. I have no keys. Could I use the hanger to maybe pick the lock? No, nope. that won't work. Let's go through this door. Quiet. Man, everything mm -hmm. is just locked to me. All right, what, what, what's this? Interior flats. Ooh. Oh, so Isaac Farber lives next to his business. Molly Rangel, the Gibbs family. I don't know who those people are, but okay. So Isaac Farber lives right through here. And of course it's locked. Okay. Not right. So uh, all three are locked. All right, door number four, come on. Fire exit, you gotta give me something here. It's quiet. Yes, all right. And we are outside again. God damn. Let's 
concerned that I haven't seen anyone yet. That's a bad sign. It's like in games when uh, they give you a lot of health and guns and ammo because they're preparing you for like an epic boss fight. The fact we haven't seen anyone or seen anything of importance yet besides items means there's probably gonna be a lot of scares in this. And we're just getting warmed up. A little soccer ball. Well, let's explore around this, uh, I'm assuming it's a garden of sorts. The outside in the first level is a pretty safe area, so I doubt we're in any danger here. Ooh, a bicycle. Old bicycles, abandoned perhaps, depending on what neighborhood they were in. They could have been stolen long ago. Got a dumpster. A lot of trash. Nothing out of the ordinary. Park bench. Got another door here. It's locked. Man, a lot of locks. I think we need to find many keys in this level. The table in there might have something useful on it. If only I could get inside. Alright, so we gotta get a key. Maybe that shiny object right there is a key. It looks like something I can pick up. Yes! No! Ah! Uh, so clumsy. Renee! Butterfingers. Alright. I must get down to the cellar if I want to get my hands the on the cellar. Now. We were down there just moments ago. So let me check this garbage can real quick and then I'll head back. If it will let me open this garbage can. Actually, it's not letting me interact with that. I thought it would. Bins are all full of rubbish. You'd think the building has been completely abandoned. That might be why we haven't seen anyone. Okay. So that's a door right there. I'm gonna ignore that. So I'm just gonna keep tabs on all the doors we're walking by, and then we will visit those later after we get whatever item we dropped. It looks like some sort of card. It wasn't the key. Interesting. There's something in the bin. It's metallic and half buried in rubbish. Should I take it? Oh, absolutely! Is that another Koltar token? Silver this time. Okay. Nice. Can we get grill tongs? The grill is rusty and dirty. Everything seems like it was abandoned here. When I was living in Japan, I did find a lot of abandoned items in the streets of Tokyo. I'm not sure why. But I did find it was interesting. Okay, so just one way exit. Don't have to listen. Alright, so let's head back to the basement and see what we dropped. All these doors are locked, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, now we're heading back into the main room. So the hallway, or the basement area, was back towards the upstairs part of the shop. Ooh. What was that? Ooh. To a reinforced door like this, I will never be able to hear a thing. Really? So what happens if we try to listen? The door is too thick. Even if someone were screaming the other side, I wouldn't hear it. Okay, so there are some doors that are reinforced that will prevent me from listening in. That means the presence could be behind it. I also noticed that the camera panned over to this computer monitor. So before I put the coal tar token in, let's take a look at what the uh, security screen is showing me. Okay. Ooh. What in the world? No idea what that was, but it fled the scene. Whew. It looks like that whatever that monster was did flee the scene. It, it looks like it was part of the presence or something, but oh, it's such a small room too. It, this is the gallery. What? 
Nothing abnormal. What's it doing in there? Does that mean the monster can go through walls? Like, shoot, man. I do not want to open that thing just yet. I really don't. So let's head to the Coltar token and play the mini game. Because uh, I don't think I'm ready to deal with a monster just yet. All right, Coltar. Give me my fortune. Such an evil laugh. Play and win. Play and lose. Hmm. Having doubts? Go right through. Oh, if you're talking about that door we just saw the monster behind, I will take a hard pass at that. No thank you. No <laughs> thank you. Meanwhile, let's see what we dropped. Because I def... Ooh. Was that set of candles lit before? Seems brighter in here. Who leaves lit candles in their stores? I do have to ask that. Oh, I don't have to listen, so the door is safe. So it sounds like if you listen to certain doors, you don't have to listen to them again. They're just marked as safe automatically in the game. That is nice. Okay, heading down here. I think this is where the item dropped. Yep, here it is. I got you. What the? Stop. Totuka Lake. What is that? Hmm? These little decorations always end up in the storage room. It, I can't make out one of the letters. It, I think it says Totuka or Toluca. Oh, it's a refrigerator magnet. Okay, the magnet from refrigerator ornament. This magnet will come in handy. The rest won't. Interesting. Okay. Stronger than I thought. Well, I, I remember that door down there was locked. So... Oh, uh, that... Whatever that thing was, it was upstairs outside. Oh, no. I really hope this thing doesn't end up chasing me in this level. I don't know what you would call it. Like, I know people online are calling the the evil spirit in the game the presence, but I don't know, like, what, like, certain monsters are or what the lore is, so I'm, I'm looking forward to finding that out as I play more. Okay. All right, guys, so this is the first episode, or part one, I should say, of episode two. We've had a fair bit of excitement. We've gotten two Goltar tokens. We've gotten several items. We've located two hiding spots, and we've encountered what seems to be some sort of ghoulish monster. And my guy's freaking out right now. Come on, man. Don't freak out on me. Don't freak out on me. Let's get to this table right here. Feel nice and safe. Oh, yeah. I'm safe here. I'm right next to a hiding spot. So I'm going to say this is a nice place to end the episode for the time being. When we pick up, we will go outside and face whatever monster awaits us. So I'll leave you guys a bit of a cliffhanger. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment on what your favorite part of Song of Horror is so far. And if you have any questions about the game, feel free to ask. I will do my best to answer them in the comments. And yeah, subscribe for more variety of gaming content where filmmaking meets gaming. Have a good night, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.